What is fasting? Let's talk about that. I'm Bridget Ayer, and I'm joined today with Tom Ayer. What is fasting? Let's talk about that. You can't take that intro from that. Yeah, I like that. Uh, that's the Rhett and Link intro, and that's really great. So I'm using it because it's good. Rhett and Link, they're famous YouTubers. So we're not famous, but we're going to talk about fasting. So, oh, and the reason we're wearing gray is because there is a movement among lay Catholics to fast in response to the clergy sex abuse scandal so that when bad things happen throughout history God's people have um, fasted. As a means of renewal, as a means of helping out in their own prayer life but also as a way to uh, kind of deal with very evil things. So. And um, actually if you want to look up um, there's actually a scripture verse it's mark 9 29 and that that's a scenario where jesus is with his disciples and i forget where they were at but they there was a situation where they couldn't cast out a demon and his disciples were saying to jesus well why couldn't we cast the demon out and jesus's response in mark 9 29 is some demons can only be cast out by prayer and fasting. So the gray, wear gray, is a movement um, put together by a layperson blogger. Her name is Kendra, and she's um, she has a blog. It's CatholicAllYear.com. She had this idea, which is really interesting because Tom and I. Well, by the way, this is Tom, my husband, who. Um, we talk about religious stuff all the time since we're married, uh, but we were actually talking about when the priest scandal broke, we were talking about, well, just jokingly, um, you know, we're going to have to get on our sackcloth and ashes. But I couldn't actually remember what story that came from. I was getting it mixed up with a lot, but where did that come from? Do you remember that story? Well, that would be Jonah going through the city of Nineveh, uh, indicating that the city would be destroyed in 40 days. And as a response to that, the leaders, the leader of Nineveh, as well as the people, put on sackcloth and ashes as a sign of their repentance and renewal, and God canceled the destruction. But if you, if you don't know anything about Nineveh, because there may be people who aren't Catholic or who aren't even Christian, who know nothing about the Bible, the Ninevites were involved in all sorts of bad shenanigans. Uh, less than ideal behavior. So God wasn't really happy with that, so he was going to destroy the city. He told his, jo uh, his prophet Jonah, go tell them um, to get their act together or... The city would be destroyed. So they did. They put the sackcloth and ashes on. But we're, not, we're actually going to be talking about fasting, not so much from a theological perspective, um, but more of different ways you can fast. So I have... This segment's going to be the top 10 ways to fast. And we'll talk about um, our fasting. Well, what is fasting? I actually have a definition for that. By Father Al Lauer, who is of Presentation Ministries. And um, he defines fasting as the limiting of our intake of food in response to God's call for the building of his kingdom. So we can do that as a way to build the kingdom and or to in reparation for sins, not just our own sins, but the sins of others. So that's kind of what the sackcloth and ashes movement is for. But it's also for the building of the kingdom of God. So if you want to get in on the fasting, the, the first way to fast and the most obvious way to fast is to limit food in some way. And um, this is a really challenging for everybody, especially if you live in the United in the United States, where you can pretty much eat whatever you want, whenever you want, um, and as much as you want. <laughs> that's a whole very true. that's a whole other topic. Um, but one of the fasts I think that came out of 
Fatima or Medjugorje. And if you don't know what those things are, you can Google them. But um, was the fast on bread and water on, on Wednesdays and Fridays. And I did that for a long time, a long time ago, like maybe 20 years ago I did that. And I've gone through phases where I would do better on fasting than others. But that fasting is pretty drastic. Um, so I have some other ones if you're new to fasting and you want to still do something to kind of build up your um, relationship with God or you want to um, build up the kingdom of God, you could start off with something like getting rid of chips, you know, potato chips, or this is something we're trying to do, sugar, um, get, getting rid of pop. Um, another way you can fast with food is just go down to two meals. Um, I know one of the, a priest I know, he fasted all the time and he would only eat bland food. He wouldn't put butter on his food. He wouldn't, you know, put salt or any spices. Just everything he ate was just bland. So that's another way. So there's just even within the whole food realm, um, there's a lot of ways you can do that. So number one is food. Number two, why don't you give number two? Well, actually, we could probably combine two and three or discuss those at the same time because complaining, selfishness, and sort of a self-centeredness, those things can be part of sort of a discipline and renewal of self uh, and focusing on others as well as, you know, certainly understanding that you do not have or you probably have a very good situation uh, compared with the rest of the world, so constantly complaining about it uh, may not be necessarily the greatest idea in the world. Uh, at, if you do a little bit of research, you will discover that even the, the average wage in the United States is in the top two or three percent of the world. So we are a very well-off people that probably shouldn't be complaining about an awful lot. And selfishness more than anything else. That's number else. three is selfishness. But we could talk about those in turn for that particular item in terms of um, uh, we do need to think of others not only within our family community but our faith communities and our community at large you know the things that we can do for others around us uh, will just make this world a better place so number four social media uh, I think it depends how old you are um, as to how much you use social media. Uh, I think if you're 13 to 35, you're probably using a lot of social media to the point where you may be neglecting other things like your friends or your family. Uh, I'm on social media quite a bit. Uh, but So that's one way you could fast. Fast from um, maybe instead of five hours of social media, you could maybe do 30 minutes of social media or just cut it out completely on one day a week or something like that. Okay, here's one. I'll have you give the next well, one. We're back. We had to take a lunch break. How ironic. That's kind of a bad witness when you're doing a thing on fasting. Okay, so we're going to up to number five. Uh, number five on fasting, you could give up. <laughs> Football worldwide is another one that's extremely popular. We dedicate an awful lot of time and resources to what Greg Easterbrook calls the artificial universe of sports. So what we can do certainly is not to dedicate so much time, energy, and money to those particular things and direct them more towards the greater good or the greater community. Okay, fasting, uh, top 10 ways to fast, number six, Technology, and that could be TV, Netflix, uh, being on your phone, maybe you're not on social media, but maybe you're reading articles or watching football or doing other things. Um, negative self-talk, number seven. Uh, you know, one of the things we direct an awful lot of negative uh, talk towards ourselves and others and that type of thing, getting and delivering compliments uh, at times can be something that's extremely difficult, but just a simple please and thank you 
uh, can make so much of a difference and frankly make the world a better place just by something very simple like that. My dad always said, growing up, he said, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything. So that's a great, wor that's a great rule. Okay, number eight, fasting. Fast from work, <laughs> not completely, overwork. So Tom and I both have home offices and it's really easy, especially if you live in the United States, we live in a very competitive culture and in order to get ahead it seems like you have to work almost 24 7 so sometimes we do that too much we don't need to do it that much so um, that's one another way we can fast not to neglect your responsibilities to your employer but I mean sometimes enough is enough so you can fast on overworking and it's important not to worry about overworking number nine <laughs> Fast from worrying. Uh, worrying, uh, you know, is a good thing because, of course, you are caring for others and thinking of others, but also, you know, we need to think of the words from Scripture of, you know, all the hairs have been counted, the lilies of the field, the sparrow, you know, not one falls from the sky. So God is providing and uh, directing and giving so much. So don't worry, folks. And gossip, number 10, fasting from gossip. And... I've heard that's not good. <laughs> and gossip is kind of more of a female thing, whereas, you know, the football sports um, obsession is more of a guy thing, I think. But, I mean, obviously you can have guys gossip and, and females watch sports or that kind of thing. But I I've think, heard about that. I think as a general rule that some of these things fit for more females and, and more... Um, for guys, so there's plenty of things to pick from from this list. Um, let's go. Let's give the the recap. Top ten. Do you want to give the recap? The top ten ways to fast are Tom Air. Uh, well, from food complaining, selfishness, uh, social media, uh, sports, technology, negative talk, overwork, worry and gossip and really you know all of these it's a way to as we talked about renew and make your world a better place and um, and if you want more in-depth more spiritual um, guidance or um, you know Old Testament New Testament scriptures on fasting um, the benefits of fasting you know deliverance all that kind of stuff you can go to my blog, www.allaboutthegrace.com. But we wanted to give you just some practical ways that you can fast besides food where we can build up the kingdom of God. So, how'd that go? We'll see you next time. Yep, see you next time. God bless. Bye-bye.